Self-awareness has become kind of a, a hot topic, a buzzword over the last three or four years, especially on social media, but it doesn't make it any less important. Self-awareness is one of the most critical keys to your success. But what does that really mean? Being self-aware means that you not only know, you're not only aware of the things going on around you, you're aware of how you affect the things that are going around you. You're aware of how you affect those that you're in contact with on a daily basis. The secret to personal change is found in the truth. Um, it's figuring out who you actually are. Yep. Um, and, and I think the, the best way to phrase that or to frame that would be to say that that's the first step. Yep. It's the secret because you can't do any part of changing until you figure out who you are. You can't start the other 30, 40, 50 steps along the way until you've figured that part out, which is right, who in right. the world are you? Yep. Because until we figure out who we really are, which also plays into the discussion during lunch, the difference between who we say we are and the difference between who we pretend to be or who we act like we are or who we're supposed to be even at times. The difference between that and who we really are. And there's fear in that, in that reality of exposing ourselves even to ourselves. So uh, certainly. And there's uh, pressure that can be caused by ultimately coming to grips with reality. Because for many of us, you believe who you said who you said you are for so long. You think that's actually who you are. <laughs> But, but it's not. And when, and when there's that gap, like we talked about in the book, when there's that gap between who you say you are and who you really are, that's what causes so much pressure because over years of years of years of pretending to be one thing but being completely another, you feel like you can't go back. Like, I can't now become this person. Or I can't now expose and be this real person when I've been pretending to be this for. 25 years, 15 years, five years, however long. But until you do, there's literally no exit strategy. So who are you? <laughs> you know what's funny? <laughs> As you were saying that, I was thinking back through the evolution, mm -hmm. um, the evolution of our business. Yeah. And I had to I had to face the truth of who I was and who I wasn't so that I could know who I needed around me mm -hmm. so that we could take a business to another level. Yeah. And that's uh, that's hard sometimes. That's hard sometimes to look yourself in the mirror and go, okay, these are the, you're terrible at this. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, there's this guy, Tyler, he's really good at this. Mm -hmm. And together, we'll dominate. Learning about yourself is great. Understanding yourself better is great, but it's meaningless if you don't do anything about it. You can learn. You can you can learn all about yourself, man. I, man, I know me so well. But if I don't do anything about the things I figure out about myself, then I'm not going to get anywhere. There are things that you are going to be weak in. There are things that are not going to be strengths of yours, and that's what makes you you. Like that's what makes you uh, unique. And you have to just figure out what are my strengths and quit focusing on the weaknesses. Uh, and to me, that's what eliminates self-doubt. When you're going all in on your strengths, when you're going all in on your gifts, it allows you to be completely self-confident. But here's the thing, self-confident, self-confident, self-doubt, like it's on you. The moment of clarity was when I was flat broke yeah. and started to make that, that change in my life was realizing that it was all my fault. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that whole cliche, like looking yourself in the mirror, but it's, it's literally taking ownership of sure. every single thing in your life and yeah. saying it's all your fault. And I would get pushback on that. Like, oh, you, you're saying, you know, your marriage because my wife had an affair. Like, oh, you're saying her affair was your fault. I'm like, yep. 
Like, because if I would have been the absolute best husband, created the absolute best environment in my household, which I didn't, would that affair still happen? Maybe, but probably not. Like the business failure and the crazy thing that fell out with that. Like, was that your fault? Yes, a hundred. Like, it, it's all your fault, and and it's not taking ownership of those things that's keeping you shackled to them. And so for me, it was that. It was just it was taking a hundred percent ownership and understanding. And the encouragement of that was, if I got myself into that situation, I could get myself out. of it. And that's because it, it's a tough conversation to have with yeah. yourself. I mean, oh, yeah. you just deflect, deflect, deflect. Oh, yeah. And then, I mean, legitimately, instead of just the walls cracking, I mean, the whole thing comes crumbling down. Oh, yeah. That, those points are where you either sit down, bro, you just mm-hmm. continue just to, to crawl through the earth, or yeah. you stand up, man. And and there's this, uh, this phrase, and it's used spread out throughout uh, all these different I guess forms, right? It can be a Proverbs or it can be in the Bible, but in the Latin phrases, I'm more fati, right? And it's love with it. So mm. when people realize where they're at yep. in that specific moment, that, that period of enlightenment for them, mm. they realize that every success, every failure, everything ties back together for you to be in this exact moment that we're in right now. Yeah. Everything that has happened to you and everything that you are doing, it's it's your fault. And the encouragement in that, and I've said this before, the encouragement in that is like if, if you got yourself into it, then you know, guess what? You can get yourself out of it. And that's and that's the encouraging thing. But I know still like saying that, it's like it's frustrating to hear. Like I get that. Like, oh, you're saying this and this was this was my fault. Yeah, I am. Uh, and I get like, you know, things that happened to you as a child, things that happen like, you know, things that you can't control, some of those. That wasn't your fault, but allowing it to still resonate and still fester inside you and still be causing issues 10 years later, five years later, 15 years later, that's your fault. It's one of the most beautifully tangible definitions of taking ownership. You mentioned that phrase, taking ownership, because a lot of people talk about it. I talk about it all the time that you have to take ownership, personal responsibility. But in your story, taking ownership didn't just mean, you know, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be because of the things that I've done and you know, now moving forward, your story led you to a place where you had to take ownership. Well, you didn't have to, but you chose to take ownership of all those bad things that you have done. You were given, no, I, go ahead. I was gonna say, one of the things that I wish I, I would have said, uh, I honestly don't know that the outcome would have been the same with my criminal proceedings had I not taken ownership. Oh, exactly. Gone, no, ex- exactly. I mean, that, that was, that was, <laughs> that was probably the entire lens with which that judge was viewing your case is the fact that you didn't do the easy thing. You didn't, you know, snitch, you didn't take the plea deal that, that you were basically throwing yourselves at the mercy of the court and saying, look, I'm not going to sit here and try to lessen the severity of the things that I've done. And I'm sitting here willing to take ownership for those things because that's the right thing to do. Um, and like, that is the definition of integrity is, is taking ownership of all the wrongs and all the rights and saying it is what it is in order for me to move forward. I'm going to have to deal with this. However, the cards fall. And, and, and then now you're here today with that story to tell. I'm glad you said, what you said about blame because I think for me a big a big part of getting through these challenges that are unexpected is not putting the blame on other people and taking full ownership of it yourself because as soon as you take the fingers that are pointing outwards and pointing them at yourself you're basically taking the keys back to the handcuffs that are that are tying you to whatever it is that's that's happening in your life and so taking ownership means you're you're in control And if there's a challenge, if there's an obstacle, if there's uncertainty, I want to be in control.